Hello again everyone. As someone who's reviewed a fair amount of pornographic material, I knew it would only be a certain amount of time before I started getting age restrictions. So to mitigate this and avoid YouTube jail, today we'll be covering a game called Degrees of Ludity, because it's a text-based RPG, and as we all learnt from Fifty Shades of Grey, it's not pornography if it's written down. As mentioned above, it is a text RPG, originally made by one mad lad named Vrelnir. Fair warning, the game is probably more rapey than anything I've covered yet. I said yet, I'll get to you, but it's not that out of scope for what I've covered on the channel at this point. And it's arguably not as bad as that one bad end from Mirror anyway. <coughs> DOL is a self-described dark life sim, but could be considered more of a British corruption of champions, or a spiritual successor to MGQ, by which I mean he took a look at the subtitle of Lose and Be Raped, and thought, hey, I can streamline this. Degrees of Ludity is set in a fictional horrific dystopia where the rent is £2,000 a week, there is a rapist on every street corner, and the police could not give less of a shit. Wait, did I say fictional? I meant, uh, South London. The farmers are probably shagging their cattle, and all school children are psychopaths who will torture and molest other students out of nothing more than boredom. You may say this is unrealistic, but on my school bus you'd have kids cover conkers in deodorant, set them on fire, then hurl them at other students, where they would explode on impact. Wish I was making this up, I'm genuinely not. Everyone just kind of accepted this as a thing that happens? I was considered to be living in a good area. Physically, the game is purely a text adventure. However, there is some cute pixel art that mostly serves as a status indicator. You can play without it if you want to get away with playing it at work or something, but it does make it easier to navigate the map. I prefer to leave it on as I'm the kind of person that quite enjoys playing dress up. The game is highly customizable. You can change your own gender, appearance, whether you like to cross-dress, do you prefer monster girls or boys? Are you a good student, or do you spend lessons carving the S into your desk? Do you like feet? If not, you can just turn them off. You start off in an orphanage with a tiny room that the owner Bailey will charge you competitive London rent for. Bailey is quite a nasty piece of work, a man who takes the silver medal in orphan abuse second only to Bondrude. He also works as the central driving force of the game. You better be working hard and having a solid income in order to afford his increasing demands if you want to avoid his wrath. There are many ways to go about this. You can get a job at the local cafe or docks. It's not good pay, but it will help. If you're still a virgin at the end of each month, the church will pay you four grand just for that. God bless the Protestant Reformation. Also remember, God only cares about your primary genital and does not care if you take it up the ass. Hey, wait a second. Where's my four grand, huh? If you want to make some real money, then you'd be amazed how much you can make pawning valuables that people have just left lying around, unguarded, while they're asleep. And if nothing else, you've always got a warm hole. But sometimes you just can't make ends meet, or maybe you have to pay for some other freeloader too. Well, that's okay, Bailey understands. That's why he'll just beat you and sell you as a cow to the local farm in order to make up the difference. Besides paying Bailey, there are other stats that you need to manage. These are displayed on the left. Maxing out your pain or horny bar will make you become paralyzed in combat and unable to fight back for a few turns. Think of it like overheating in MechWarrior Online, but you're getting more literally fucked rather than just in the wallet. <coughs> the same is true for maxing trauma, but this comes with other fun side effects, such as hallucinations or potentially getting fucking institutionalized. So do try to avoid that. Maxing out stress will have you pass out, leaving you vulnerable to whoever's about. And that's probably not what you want in this town. Not that that is required for kidnapping. I think that one weird girl at school's been putting something in my drink. <laughs> Stress can be kept down by maintaining your control. Performing consensual lewd acts will restore it, and inversely, getting attacked will lower it. Restoring it does get more difficult, however, as you become more accustomed to debauchery, and you'll have to seek out more depraved acts in order to feel in control. The Stan Rogers special may work at first, but now, it's not so effective. Fatigue, ironically, won't actually make you pass out. However, it will make you gain stress very quickly at max, so it might as well. Finally, allure is slightly different, representing how likely people are to attack you. This will start off fairly low, provided you stick to main streets and don't walk around naked or at night. But as you get more attractive, this will not go below a minimum of perverted. Sadly, the option to beat yourself in the face with a shuffle to lower this has not been implemented yet. If you ever need help, there is a very well-maintained wiki that details just about every aspect of the game. There is even an official Google Drive filled with fan art of the game, including every major and minor character, Kyla seeming to be the most popular. Everyone that is, uh, except the Great Hawk. This is discrimination against harpies and I will not stand for it! Actually, there is some on the Discord, but I demand more nonetheless. <laughs> All of these would of course be easier to manage if you didn't have to attend school. You are legally required to attend between 9 and 3 each weekday, studying a very broad curriculum of 5 subjects, 4 of which you will be examined on weekly. You may be asking why you still need to do your 8 maths if you're 18, but look, ever since the coalition, education standards just haven't been the same. If you pass the exams, you get a permanent bonus. Science makes your pain tolerance higher, 
History lets you use the secret network of Viet Cong tunnels below the city, and English lets you cross-dress more effectively. Various events can also happen while you're at school, such as getting attacked by the local bully, politics over which mentally damaged girl you want to have lunch with, or the dreaded penis inspection day. Merely getting through and commuting to and from school can present challenge enough, as this is London. Dangerous weapons such as knives, assault spoons, or pepper sprays are considered highly illegal. So you better make sure to be careful when getting raped, as even though the police will never intervene on your behalf, if you pepper spray some rando out in the forest, they'll know. Wait, is that political commentary in my rape game? If the police do catch you for your crimes, you'll be forced to do community service. If you miss this, or do more crimes at the same time, you'll instead be sent to the pillory for public use until your debt to society has been repaid. All police are also drawn exclusively from the short bus, as should you be sent to the pillory while having active community service, this will count as not attending it due to being stuck in 20 hours worth of encounters by their own design. This is a good a time as any to talk about combat, or as the game calls them, encounters. These come in two distinct flavours, consensual and, uh, less so. DOL uses a limb-based choice system that allows you to take independent action with each of your arms, orifice, and legs. For consensual encounters, this is pretty straightforward. Just choose what you want to use and the encounter will end once they nut, reducing your stress, trauma, and potentially restoring control or gaining plus love if you like them enough. You can even just ask them to stop early if you're not feeling it. On the other hand, if it's not consensual, then there are two ways to go about ending the encounter. You can either submit, like the above, or instead you can try and fight. Inflict enough pain and they'll probably leave you alone. This is modified by your stats. Better sexual skills will let you make people nut faster, and a character with a large frame who's been hitting the gym has a much better chance of fending off attackers compared to your average short king. <laughs> if you're in public, then you can also try scream for help. This has a good chance of getting you rescued, but if it's at night or in the forest, then no one can hear you scream. Even amongst this land of promiscuity and debauchery, it is still possible to find love, and there's about eight, now nine, to choose from. These can be divided into two distinct categories, regular and proactive daters. Regular love interests consist of humans you can meet around town. Or if you're not a coward, you can seek out the proper high-tier waifus of the game. These cannot be acquired by normal means. Instead, they require you to gain what I call a more sympathetic understanding, and what everyone else calls Stockholm Syndrome. Simply walk around the forest, or moors, enough, and they will start hunting you. Then simply wait for them to gently take you back to their place. The first of which is Eden, the hunter. She is a six foot tall muscle girl, and owns both her own property and a fucking gun. Which she'll let you shoot if you're a good girl. But not just yet. She is quite lonely, and she's not too fond of sharing. So she won't let you leave. In fact, she'll keep you tied up on her collar and leash. As if that's a bad thing, I mean what? But if you can prove that you won't just leave, even if you have the opportunity to, she'll start to open up to you. First letting you leave for a day, then longer. Eventually doing construction projects together, reading you lewd bedtime stories, and cuddling by the fireplace. She also provides daily head pats. Great waifu, based in Kaczynski pilled out of 10. I recently had Valentine's Day roll around, and without wishing to spoil it, it was some of the genuinely most adorable writing I've seen in the game. If you follow my channel, then you probably also like your girls a little less... human. Then, let me introduce you to the two others of the Stockholm Trio. The Black Wolf Alpha and the Great Hawk of Terror. These are a werewolf and a harpy, respectively. The Black Wolf is pretty straightforward, being either a wolf girl slash boy, or a straight up wolf, depending on your settings. They live in a cave and shit in the woods. Wet dog smell out of 10. They could kind of do with some more content, but I think most people already agree with that. The Great Hawk, on the other hand, is very misunderstood. Despite her name as the Great Hawk of Terror, she is actually quite friendly and gentle. She'll bring you food and stolen goods. Like Eden, she'll not let you leave the nest straight away. Like any good bird mother, you'll need to be fully fledged. Being around her makes you transform into a harpy, letting you fly in certain areas and giving you better eyesight. You'll need to wait for your wings to grow, at which point she'll teach you how to fly and sing like a bird. Once you're fully fledged, you can happily glide back to town. You can also cuddle up in her wings and sing duets together across the moors. And if you don't think seeing together with your wife while in the soft, warm embrace of her wings is the cutest shit ever, then get out of my channel. Also great waifu, 10 out of 10. On a side note, you can customise the gender and genitalia of every major NPC. So if you want to nuzzle Black Wolf's bulgy wolgy, you can. Now please excuse me while I go vomit after that last sentence. Now would be a good time to talk about transformations. Taking certain actions will result in major changes to your body. These include beast-type transformations, like the aforementioned harpy, as well as cat, wolf, and... Do you remember when I said that Bailey can sell you to become a cow? Well, I mean that quite literally. There are also divine transformations. You can only have one of each at a time, although with divine it's more of a linear path downwards anyway. 
You start off with Angel, and then take a plunge down from there should you lose your virginity. First to Fallen Angel, then to Succubus or Incubus, depending on your gender. Given this game, it's not hard for this fall to happen. So you better hope you brought the extra strength chastity belt. A chastity belt? If Monster Girls are not your thing, why are you on my channel then? There are more normal love interests around town. There is Avery, a rich sugar mummy who will take you on expensive dates. Just uh, don't say no. She's pretty alright, pays my rent out of ten. There is Kyla, a Yandere adjacent stalker, who unfortunately won't actually murder anyone for you, but will help you set up a meth lab in the orphanage loft. Six out of Yuno Gase. There is Whitney the Bully, for those who like their relationships both emotionally and physically abusive. Alex, for those sexually attracted to the Wurzel. And Robin, your fellow orphan, whose story is just kind of sad and I can't really think of a joke for. So instead, here's it at four times speed, so it's inaudible and I don't get age restricted again. But if you're a cat girl, Robin will headpat you. Depending on who you choose, you'll get different events around town, as well as special events around holidays like Halloween or Christmas. In my first playthrough, I forgot to export my save and lost it. But after that, I ended up settling down with Eden and living a peaceful life with her for most of the week, then regularly visiting my harpy girlfriend at the weekend in the moors. If you have wings, the commute back's actually quite short. This also has the advantage of never having to pay Bailey, as he doesn't know where the harpy lives. And while he does know about Eden, he is also well aware that while he can torture children with impunity at the orphanage, Eden's quite protective, and he's not immune to getting shot. It is also worth noting that Bailey struggles with object permanence, so should you take on Robin's debt and just do a runner, they'll be safe. Bailey doesn't try and collect from them. I personally like to believe that the Great Hawk eventually moves to the forest with me in Eden. By going to Eden, hey check out this sick ass bird I found. It's an ancient form of hunting, I think Eden would respect that. Living a peaceful life hunting and cuddling by the fire with Eden is probably the closest thing you'll get to a good ending in this game. So is that your only option? To forget those left behind to their horrific fates at Bailey's hands? Or to forever be one of them too? Well, allow me to introduce you to my most recent character. Eustolfo, le mangeur génital. Starting out, my first priority was to attend school. Actually, it's to go to the hairdresser as you can't have hair by default. We focus only on science and English, making sure to go for a run before to get swole. This makes us more resilient to pain and better at cross-dressing, respectively. Then it's time to head for the farm. Why the farm? Because the farm has cows, drinking the milk from which is the fastest way to achieve transformation into a cat boy. This gives us the fangs trait, tripling damage done by biting. Did you know there is a modifier for biting someone in sensitive areas? We'll get back to that. We have also remained a virgin. This means, with the help of what we make at the farm, we get enough money from the church to pay off Bailey. Finally, we attempt to raise our sadism as high as possible. This further doubles our physical damage. Now, let's talk numbers. An average punch does 4 damage, a kick a little better at 10. Now, biting does a mere 4 damage to a hand, but if you bite a sensitive area, this is instead increased to 10 as well as multiplied by 4. This stacks with fangs, but it doesn't stop here. Having a high physique and a large body multiplies this by a further 4 times, and max sadism by a further 2. These all stack. For reference, pepper spray does around 200 damage, and is enough to end most single encounters almost instantly. So, at 10 times 4 times 3 times 4 times 2, gives us in the region of 900 damage. This means getting bitten in the dick is the same as getting pepper sprayed four and a half times. All at once, in the dick. At this point, you're not just biting someone's dick, you're... you're orally castrating them. So it's time to get to work. Now we are ready to face the final challenge himself, Bailey. The game is great, but I do have some criticisms. I was originally going to write more, but a lot of it felt unnecessary because, well, the game's not done. The game may lack an end game, but we're in 0.3, we're not even close to 1.0 yet. And also most of the things I'd say, like the wolves not having much content, has already been acknowledged in the threads. Most other things are just small nitpicks, like how you can repair Eden's clothes at the cabin, but not your own. It'd be neat if you could use the harpy wings to more areas than just the moors, although some of these might be intentional for balance reasons, I don't know. 
And also, because my BF will make me sleep on the sofa if I don't mention it, there is currently no way to join Remy's farm consensually. Honestly, I just want more content with the Great Hawk, but I'm not exactly impartial about that. The game is still being actively updated though, a whole new love interest was dropped while I was writing this script. Overall, the game's great. It has actually mind-broken at least one of my friends, and I think it has awakened things in me that I will pretend not to acknowledge. If you haven't been put off by my descriptions of the game, or feel like developing a few new fetishes to disappoint your parents with, give it a go, the game's free, with the option to support Vrelnir should you wish. There is a ton more to the game that I've not even touched upon, like Alex's farm, playing blackjack as a hooker, the brothels, strip club, museum, and content's always being added. But this script is already on its sixth page and third recording of audio, and I really don't want to spend three weeks editing this like I did with the Everhood video. The link is not below, as just the uncensored patch for the game got me a no-no strike from YouTube last time. Use Google, it's not that hard. There is also always the Discord server, and a few anons talking about it in the Hentai Games General on D. I still have no idea how to end videos, but thank you for watching, and if you're still here, thank you to Vrelnir for making this game in the first place. I know I said I'd have one video out a month this year, but much like 12-year-old me waiting for overly personal anecdote removed, you're going to be disappointed. Next video will be the final chapter of the Trap Shrine Saga once it comes out, 